in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Tuesday, the 5th of November, 2024, 31st week in Ordinary Time. And today we keep the memorial of St. Zechariah and Elizabeth. All that we would want to know about them is found in the Gospel of St. Luke. The saints, Zechariah and Elizabeth, were the parents of John the Baptist. Zechariah was a priest and Elizabeth was the cousin of Mary, the mother of Jesus. In the Gospel of Luke, we are told both were righteous in the eyes of God, observing all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. Luke chapter 1 verse 6. Elizabeth and Zechariah never stopped praying that God would bless their marriage with a child, even though it seemed impossible as they grew elderly. Their lives teach us to trust always in God. There are so many marriages which have been broken because somebody is not giving a child. And there are people who have become unfaithful because of the delays in childbearing. And you know, we have to understand that it is God who gives the child. And in his own time, he will do that. That's the lesson that these two saints give to us. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Florence Kawimbe from Polokwane, South Africa, take for us the first reading. Fungai Maminimini from Port Elizabeth, with his beloved wife, take for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Paul Philip Onyeka from the Archdiocese of Kaduna, Nigeria, as he celebrates his priestly anniversary today. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, by whose gift your faithful offer you right and praiseworthy service, grant we pray that we may hasten without stumbling to receive the things you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. He humbled himself, therefore God has highly exalted him. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Philippians chapter 2. Verses 5 to 11. Brethren, have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. The Responsorial Psalm is taken from Psalm chapter 22, verse 26b, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. The response is taken from Psalm 22, verse 26a. And the response is, You are my praise, Lord in the great assembly. 
You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. My voice I will pay before those who fear him. The poor shall eat and shall have their fill. They shall praise the Lord, those who seek him. May their hearts live on forever and ever. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. All the earth shall remember and return to you, the Lord. All families of the nations worship before him. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. For the kingdom is the Lord's. He is ruler of nations. They shall worship him, all the mighty of the earth. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. And my soul shall live for him. My descendants save him. They shall tell of the Lord to generations yet to come. Declare his saving justice to peoples yet unborn. These are the things the Lord has done. You are my praise, Lord, in the great assembly. Gospel acclamation. The gospel acclamation is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Come to me, all who labor, and I have laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Chapter 14, verses 15 to 24. At that time, one of those who sat at table with Jesus said to him, Blessed is he who shall eat bread in the kingdom of God. But he said to him, A man once gave a great banquet and invited many. And at the time for the banquet, he sent his servant to say to those who had been invited, Come. For all is now ready, but they all alike began to make excuses. The first said to him, I have bought a field, and I must go out and see it. Please have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to examine them. Please have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and reported this to his master. Then the householder in anger said to his servant, Go out quickly to the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in the poor and maimed, and blind and lame. And the servant said, Sir, what you commanded has been done, and still there is room. And the master said to the servant, Go out to the highways and hedges, and compel people to come in, that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those men who were invited shall taste my banquet. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was introducing the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians yesterday, I told you that Epaphroditus was sent by the Philippian community to go and give to Paul the gifts they had gathered to share with him while in prison at Ephesus. And he reported also a few other things that were not going right in the community at Philippi. One of the things that Epaphroditus told Paul was regarding the service in the community. Many of them had misunderstood. They thought to become a catechist was a very big post and so they had to be feared. They thought becoming a chairman in the parish was something very big and so they had to be listened to. They commanded respect. And they started seeing themselves as people of a particular class. But Paul reminded them of the hymn they were using 
in their community to sing. And that hymn is quoted in the passage of today, which is about Christ. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. If any one of us had been Jesus, I am telling you, no one would be sleeping today. Because we'll be going around like there were some of us who are in this service boast about the work God does in our lives. You see, I have done it and people clap. Oh, man of God, man of God. You see, who can match with me? I am more powerful than God. There are people who claim like that. But Jesus who was in the form of God did not count himself equality with his dad. A thing to be understood. We have to understand where our value lies. It is not in anything that we do. We may be performing miracles. We may be doing a lot of things for the society. But we don't have to raise our shoulders that yes, recognize us. This is what we are. No. Come on. Humble yourselves. Because if you want God to lift you up, you must learn to humble yourselves. That's exactly what we find in James chapter 4 verse 10. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up. He is the one who lifted up his son Jesus Christ. He is the one who gave him the glory that he talks about in his priestly prayer in chapter 17 verse 1 to 5 of the gospel of St. John. And so if you want greatness, don't take it from human beings. Take it from God. Because the greatness that God offers is much bigger. But he will never give you that greatness if you have bestowed it upon yourself. The gospel passage of today is in the context of a meal. Jesus is invited by a Pharisee, a continuation of what we had yesterday. And while he is talking to them about benevolent living, about living selfless lives where they have to invite people who may not give them anything in return. Somebody gets very touched. He sees this as a prefiguration of what is going to happen in heaven. And so he exclaimed and said, Blessed is everyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. This man recognizes that Jesus is actually talking about the banquet that will take place in heaven, in the kingdom of God. But he said to them, a man gave a banquet. People were invited, but they started giving excuses. Jesus wants to say, you know what? That's what I've come to do. I've come to introduce the kingdom of heaven here on earth, but there are so many people who give excuses as to why they cannot commit themselves to Christ. They give excuses because they want to continue with their addictions. They give excuses because they are comfortable in their sinful nature with the small houses they have made and forgotten about the fact family they committed themselves to, they give excuses because they want to continue living a life of bribery, of corruption, which is not part of the kingdom of God. He's inviting all of us. How ready are we to commit ourselves to God in humility in order for the world to know there is light in the darkened world. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed Tuesday to you. Thanks be to God.